Welcome once again. Hey, in this video, I want to talk about a very interesting story about my great grandmother. Now, I have never met my great grandmother in person. Like, she passed away before I was born, but I heard about it from my grandmother many, many times. It's a very interesting story. I just want to share this with you. Now, she was born in the 1800s. Think about this for a minute. I mean, cars, you wouldn't see them around. I mean, airplanes, you would not see them around. And so traveling back in those days, it took a lot more time than it, did, you know, than it does today. It took a lot of time to go from one town to another town, a lot of time, a lot of work. Can you imagine traveling with just a horse and buggy? I mean, it would just go slow. I mean, it would be very relaxing and stuff, but this is how people traveled back in those days. And because it took so long and because, you know, it was so much work, they would look for a home to stop at, you know, someone who's very friendly, someone that would be very welcoming, you know, just to stop at and to have, you know, some beverages and perhaps a little bit of food, you know, a little bit of hospitality there, and then get on your way after you have some rest. You know, back in Bible days, you know, Jesus said that, you know, when you go to another city, find someone worthy and stay at their place. You know, and the idea is, you know, you, you can't just travel back and forth very fast using automobiles or, or planes like we do today. So you needed to find some place to stay or at least some place to rest. So my great grandmother used to live just on the edge of town. OK, she lived in a country location. I mean, she had a barn, she had a cow, you know, this kind of thing. So when somebody was traveling from another city or from another town and they were coming into town, her farm was one of the first places they would see. Her home was one of the first places they would come across. And so she was known as a very hospitable woman. And she would invite these people into her home and she would give them something to eat. She would let them have a little bit of rest and relaxation and talk to them a little bit. And so she would have a lot of people coming through. Actually, even my grandmother said that, you know, some of these transients would put a mark on, on, the, on the road outside her house. You know, there was a certain mark among the certain you know, group of travelers that they would say, that if you see this mark on the road, that means this is a, a good place to stop at. So there was a mark on the road outside her home. And so she would get a lot of people stopping by. And some of these people would be regulars. I mean, she would see them, you know, from time to time and they would get to know her. She would get to know them. And there was this one man that would come from time to time. And one day he started talking to her about something very strange. He said, you know, one day he said to her, one day you're going to see machines that are flying in the sky. There's going to be these machines that people are going to get into and they're going to be able to fly. And he says, you're going to be seeing these machines flying across the sky. Well, you know, she thought that he was crazy. I mean, she thought that he was so out of his mind, she kicked him out of her house and would not allow him back in. And we all know today that this man was talking to her about airplanes, okay? She thought he was crazy. She thought he was out of his mind. By the way, I hear an airplane right now. So even as a child, I would think, what can be learned from this? What is the moral of the story? What is the lesson here, okay? I thought, how many people today, if you were to tell them about what is gonna happen in the future, or basically if you were just to talk to them about anything true, about stuff that's happening right now that is censored, I mean, people would think you're crazy. Perhaps that man that my great-grandmother said was crazy, perhaps he knew about the Wright brothers. Perhaps he knew something that my great-grandmother did not know. You know, with all due honor and all due respect, my great grandmother, instead of saying that he's crazy and saying that he was out of his mind and kicking him out of his house and not allowing him back in the home. I mean, who wants a crazy person in your home? Instead of doing that, what she should have done is asked some intelligent questions. What did you see that I didn't see? What do you know that I don't know? What did you read that I didn't read? What kind of evidence did you come across that I have never came across? So next time someone says something to you that sounds really crazy, it might be, it might be crazy, but don't outrule the fact that it might be true. Ask intelligent questions.